Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P., Joe P. Zapia. That is Kyle Yates, and it's Andrew Erickson, and it's you, and it is start-sit time. That's right. It's week one. We're going to be coming to you every single week with the start-sit show, the guys you should have in your lineup, the guys you should have out of it, and everything possibly in between. We are so excited to be here to start the season fresh here with everybody just coming off their drafts. Everybody's super excited trying to look at those lineups. And week one, we know historically, can really kick in the seat of the pants. So we're going to do everything we can to avoid that kick. We're going to shimmy left. We're going to shimmy right. Little juke here and there. And hopefully we will land everybody where they're supposed to be in the proper spot in your lineup. Yates, this is always a very exciting show because this is like that first signal of, okay, get your lineups in because tomorrow night we've got football. Yeah, I've got, you know, we've done all the drafts, all the rosters are like, you know, set for the most part. But then I yesterday was like, oh, yeah, I need to set lineups. I need to actually like go through and play and set my matchups and like make sure that everything is good to go because I've just been so engrossed in, you know, draft stuff and then moving into the weekly articles. So, yeah, I actually kind of forgot about my actual fantasy football lineups. But don't (laughs) worry, they're all set. They're ready to go and ready to give some advice here as we move into week one. We are so busy worrying about your lineups. We sometimes forget our own, uh, but we can never forget Andrew Erickson. And I am very pleased to announce that our good friend Andrew Erickson from Pro Football Focus is going to be joining us for this show every single Wednesday. He is so gracious with his time and his energy. And and hopefully you're subscribing to YouTube as well. And you can watch the show again on the YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash fantasy pros. Because if you could see... Yates is actually still younger than Erickson by like, I don't know, days or hours, but Erickson, you look so much younger still. It's because you don't have kids yet. That's why you take a good look, everybody. He is fresh faced, five years younger looking than Yates. And that's the kind of energy we need on the show. I'm here to deliver. I'm here to bring it. Let's go. (laughs) Well, listen, uh, speaking of all the lineups and everything too, I want to remind everybody about our products here at Fantasy Pros, because if you've got even two lineups that you've got to set and worry about. You've got to get my playbook. Go to fantasypros.com slash my playbook. I sat down yesterday, went through all the different features and the new ones at my playbook. And let me tell you, it is absolutely stunning. You can see all of your teams and all the different sites that you play on all at once. You can make lineup adjustments all there in one page. You could see the best lineup that you could possibly have presented in terms of statistical analysis. You can look at trades. You can look at everything, but the start sit assistance specifically, like we're doing here on this show today, talk about starting and sitting. At fantasypros.com slash myplaybook, it is absolutely stunning what you can do. You can run your team's optimal lineup from a poll over 100 different fantasy football analysts and access the web, and you can quickly filter any combination of analysts for instant start-sit advice. So if you want Yates and you want to cut out Andrew and me, that's fine. We'll take it personally, but you can do that if you want. Now, here's the thing. You have to be uh, an MVP subscriber in order to do that, and I keep telling you, the way you can do that on the cheap is go to fantasypros.com slash offers. That's what you do. All you got to do is make a $10 deposit on one of our partner sites. That's Yahoo Daily Fantasy, Underdog, FanDuel, or DK. And then you enter that contest. So you deposit 10 bucks on one of these sites, enter a contest, play more fantasy, and you get six free months of our Hall of Fame package. That's a $65 value. And boom, just like that, you get the upgrade of my playbook. And you cannot live without it. Let's say on a Sunday, you're out there at Junior's game, or you're at church, or you're at some wedding that somebody scheduled during football season because they're careless. You can still have all that stuff at the touch of a finger for all of your leagues with my playbook. It is absolutely stunning and how great it is to have that tool available. Now, we are going to run through position by position, tell you the guys today that we want to start and sit. We're going to go running back, wide receiver. We're also going to talk about quarterback and tight end and then give you our must starts and must sits of the week. But before we do, I just want to take one more time out too because I know not everybody is on Twitter. And I know a lot of you keep asking and asking for updates because everyone's concerned about our brother, Mike Tagliere. And out of respect for his family, we continue to try to give them as much privacy as possible. But at the same time, we know how much you care. And I just want to communicate to everybody out there and just give them a quick update because everyone keeps asking. And I've been asked by our folks here to give you all, our listeners, a little update too. Tags is still in the hospital. He is still fighting hard. He is still going in the up and down swing with this COVID battle that he is fighting. Uh, We love seeing that hashtag, tag strong. We love it. It's something that drives us all every single day. There's not a day, probably an hour that goes by where we're not in this show or working on stuff that we're not thinking about him. And we are just overwhelmed by how uh, how much love and support that you've all showed, not only the show, but tags too. 
and his family and just keep it coming. If you're a praying person, please pray for tags. If you're not, just think good thoughts for him, whatever it is that you could possibly do. And uh, if there's more that you can do, we'll let you know as soon as possible. And and Yates, you know, uh, just if you had anything else you wanted to chime in here with real quick to, uh, but I, I think I can speak for all of us when we say he is in our thoughts and he is what motivates us this year to crush everything out of the park for you guys because we know how important this is to him and we're going to do everything to make him proud. Listen, you know, we've talked about how the past month has not been easy on us here and it has not been easy for for you guys, right? Uh, your listeners, you guys have come to grow, or come to know Tags as like your best friend as well because of how often you've listened to him on this podcast potentially. So it has not been easy for all of us here to see Tag struggling and to see him on this up and down battle. But yeah, we're continuing to pray. We're continuing to think about him nonstop. We cannot wait until he is back here on the podcast with us. It's probably going to be a little bit, but we're going to do our best here in the meantime to continue delivering the top tier fantasy advice that Tags gave you. So uh, it's fallen on us here to be able to kind of deliver that for you, but we're up to the challenge and continuously thinking about Tags and his family. All right, and in the words of Tags and his spirit, I can only say, Yates, be quiet and just start talking football, <laughs> will ya? So let's start doing that. And let's start with the running backs here. And we're going to try to address this for the 10 team leagues out there and the 12 teams, right? These guys on the fringe. Let's start with this first group that's outside of the ECR, the expert consensus rankings and half point PPR. The guys who are in that bubble of, say, flex running back potential starters here. You got DeAndre Swift, Miles Gaskin, Damian Harris, Daryl Williams. Kareem Hunt, Ronald Jones, Chase Edmonds, and Melvin Gordon. That takes us to about number 30 overall. Andrew, when you're looking at this list right now, I know we have Swift who's dealing with that injury. They say he's going to play. Uh, these are some really solid fringe RB2 slash flex guys. Who is that must start for you in this grouping? I mean, I'm, I'm still starting DeAndre Swift. Like, I, I want to play him in this matchup. Again, the 49ers have a tough run defense, and they're probably going to win the game, which means we're going to probably see more passing opportunities for the Detroit Lions, and that's where DeAndre Swift, if you drafted him, that's where you're kind of hoping he makes his hay is in the passing game. You know, last year he was RB18 points per game, and he didn't even play a 70% snap share. He only played a 70% 70, 70 snap share in one game. So even if Jamal Williams is working in, I – expect those receptions to be there those targets to be there for him so yeah i have him as a top 15 running back at rb15 and i'm gonna play him i, I like the talent and that's what i'm gonna buy into early on in week one yes before we get to your guy are you as confident in starting swift this week because of game script and the injury I am not, actually. Uh, DeAndre Swift was going to be one of the guys that I am sitting this week. So uh, Andrew and I are getting off to a fantastic start here as he is uh, <laughs> he's coming on board to, to help us out here this entire season. Cannot wait to have him on every single Wednesday. But yeah, DeAndre Swift is a guy that you know, we don't know. We know that he's going to play, and we know that the injury necessarily isn't the concern. The concern is his conditioning. Because he's missed some time here this offseason, training camp and preseason. Like, he really hasn't been able to be on the field and continue to get his body up to playing speed. So, while I think that he will see work, absolutely, this is a very, very tough matchup. And, Andrew, you are correct that San Francisco is going to run away with this game. Literally, they're going to run away with this game. But... So DeAndre Swift, the potential for him to be able to soak up targets out of the backfield, it's absolutely there. But I just have enough concerns about with the the talk about, okay, he's going to play. Like, it wasn't trending that way a week or so ago. Now mm -hmm. we've got the, okay, he's going to play, but his conditioning, we're concerned about that. So I've got DeAndre Swift at RB24 on the week. I still think that you can plug him into your lineup as a top 24 running back, certainly. But And that's mostly because once you get outside that range for me, I've got guys like Josh Jacobs at 25. He's going up against Baltimore. I don't want to play Josh Jacobs. Damian Harris has a tough matchup here against Miami. So, And then you really get into some of the ambiguity here with these running backs. So DeAndre Swift is in my top 24 just because of the nature of the position and what it is right now. But I'm concerned. I'm concerned about him and his workload here in week one. I've actually got him at 27, so I'm even uh, more low here. I'm sorry, Andrew. That's a massive swing. For Andrew yeah. to have him at 15 and you have him at 27, oh, that is a massive swing. It is a swing. massive swing, and you're not going to believe this, but there's guys like Mostert ahead of him. You know, and you know how much I love Raheem Mostert and love to talk about that. But I've got Damian Harris ahead of him. I've got Miles Gaskin ahead of him. That's right now where I'm looking. It's, it's a lot of this is, again, you know, because I do the DFS show too, it's a lot of that micromanaging of – of those matchups in the offense, defense, and the DVOA and all that stuff. And and I'm just looking right now in terms of game script and injury. I'm just concerned. And I think in a 10-team league, you probably have more of an option to go ahead and actually sit him. But in a 12-teamer, obviously, you're starting DeAndre Swift. So coming from that point of view, I can understand. If we push this ranking a little bit further here, guys, 
Uh, I want to talk more about this next grouping, especially because the next two guys on this list are on the same team, and this is always fascinating. Melvin Gordon the third is at 30. Javante Williams is at 31. So who would you rather start this week, Yates? Because this is going to be a question I feel like we're going to ask ourselves a lot of weeks in the coming future here. But we got to start here with week one because both guys have possibility of, you know, returning good fantasy value. But which one do you want to start? got Melvin Gordon at 29 on the week. I've got Javante Williams at 30. So <laughs> uh, very clear answer here. No, it's not clear at all. Uh, I've got <laughs> Melvin Gordon at 29. Like I said, he's the guy that I think you can roll out there if you, if you need to, right? And that's the difference where we're kind of at this weird point where it's like we're still relying heavily on our pre-draft ADP and where you got these guys in drafts versus as we move into the season, that's kind of thrown out the window and then you just play matchups and stuff like that. So with... Javante Williams, you drafted him ahead of Melvin Gordon, right? Javante Williams was going a round or two ahead of Melvin Gordon. Gordon was falling all the way to like an RB4 range in uh, in 12-team leagues. So I think with Melvin Gordon, he's going to have a role here at the beginning of the season, and I think he's a safe option. With Javante Williams, does he have more upside than Melvin Gordon? Absolutely. And I think that he's going to find his way onto the field more in third down situations, but I just think that they're going to cancel each other out for the time being. So Gordon is the guy that I would be going with right now, but... If you drafted Javante Williams as your RB3, you might not have that luxury. You might have to be starting him. All right, Andrew, let's let's talk about the opportunities we have here. For some people who have both of these running backs on their team, how do you approach that, number one? And number two, if you had one of these guys, who would you rather have this week starting? Well, if you drafted both of them, then your the process behind that play was you would start Melvin Gordon until Javante Williams asserted himself to the starting role. So... I have it set up ranked exactly the same as Yates does. 29, Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, number 30 overall in the rankings. And that's part of the reason why I didn't want to draft Melvin Gordon because I knew that I was never going to feel good about starting him even if he is the, you know, quote-unquote starter in this backfield. And that's kind of what people are already running into. And that's why I didn't want to draft a lot of Melvin Gordon this year. So for me, yeah, if you drafted Melvin Gordon, you should view him as a starter and you should start him. And Javante Williams, again, if he's your RB3, I think he can be a low-end flex play. In, you know, in some deeper formats because I do believe we're going to probably see more of a 50-50 split less than like a 60-40 when we saw from Philip Lindsay and Javante Williams last year. You look at the preseason usage, you know, when Melvin Gordon started, you know, he was splitting 50-50 with Royce Freeman, who's not even on the team anymore. So with the starters. So it's just kind of, it's kind of weird. And, and they obviously gave Javante Williams the, the game off. Like he didn't even play because he had already asserted himself there. Like, no, he's locked and loaded to his role. So it would not surprise me at all to see them split carries right down the middle. And in that case, I would prefer Williams, but just because we don't necessarily know that's going to happen, I'll lean towards Melvin Gordon. He is being paid as the starter. He is the incumbent, so I'd expect him to get the starter snaps. Again, it's not like the greatest matchup either, so neither of these guys you should expect a lot from, but it's not like they're going to go out there and put it, put up zero points. So again, low-end RB2 options, RB3 options. All right, let's keep pushing forward here and go from 32 on to 38. These are guys that are going to be on that fringe of that flex RB potentially that you might need to start. So Trey Sermon's at the top of 32, then James Conner, Leonard Fournette, Jamal Williams, Zach Moss, Kenyon Drake, and Naheem Hines. Yates, I'm going to give you the board first here with this grouping here. Who is your must start from this cluster of running backs? Yeah, for me, it's Trey Sermon. Uh, you know, we talked about the matchup with DeAndre Swift on the other side of the ball. Well, then I said, you know, San Francisco is going to be running away with this game. Yeah, they're literally going to be running away with this game because you're going to see Raheem Mostert just absolutely go off in this game. He's going to have a ton, a ton of production. I've got him as a top 15 back on the week. And then Trey Sermon in this range, I think that you can get away with starting him, right? We're mm -hmm. in the range where it's like the RB3 territory. I'm not excited to start any of these guys, but you can if you're in a pinch. At this point of the season, unless you drafted several weeks ago and you lost a couple of those starters like a J.K. Dobbins, Travis Etienne or whatever, you really don't need to be starting any of these guys in your flex at least. So Trey Sermon, though, in this range is the guy that I would be looking at because I think he has the most opportunity to score, to find the end zone. Uh, whereas with guys like James Conner, you're really betting that Kyler Murray's not going to be used around the goal line. Leonard Fournette, I don't even know what his role is in this backfield. And then Jamal Williams, I don't think that he's going to find the end zone. Zach Moss, same thing. Kenny Drake, no. Naeem Hines, no. So it's like, which in this range has the most upside? For me, that's Trey Sermon through and through. How about you there, Erickson? When you're looking at this grouping, is it Sermon for you as well? Yeah, I like Sermon. So an another name I'll mention here is, is Kenyon Drake for the, the Raiders. Uh, we saw Josh Jacobs actually pop up in the injury report already. You know, it hasn't, it's not, the season hasn't even started and he's already on the injury report. It's not, it's not good for Josh Jacobs. We'll probably talk about a little bit later. 
And Kenyon Drake, you know, he pro- projects to be the pass catching back. And when you get down to this range of running backs, you're not going to get guaranteed workloads anywhere. You're really looking for, okay, could this team potentially be chasing points? You know, is this a game where we could see the pass catching back get more usage than the lead back? And with the Raiders facing the Ravens, who I think are heavy favorites, I believe that we could see more of Kenyon Drake in this game, you know, mm-hmm. catching passes from Derek Carr out of the backfield and Josh Jacobs being relegated to first and second down duties where he's not going to find much running room at all because the Baltimore Ravens, their pass rushers are not great, but their interior defensive line is really, really strong with Clays Campbell, Brandon Williams, and Derek Wolf. So I got really big concerns about Jacobs, and that means we could just see more of Kenyon Drake catching passes out of the backfield. So I think that he could potentially be an interesting option in half-point PPR formats. Yeah, I agree with you on Drake for sure, especially in your, those 14-team leagues where you're looking for another flex guy, potentially. I also think in a 14-team league, you can look at Jamal Williams and okay to start him because, once again, I am concerned about Swift's health. You know, as we were talking about, he wasn't really looking like he was going to start. Now we're getting the word he's going to start, but how much action he's going to see, that becomes a question for me. But Trey Sermon's the guy in this grouping for me. So three for three for all of us. Look at us all in agreement. See, we started off rocky, boys. And then we all came together at the end. It's very emotional. Let's play a game. A little running back, who'd you rather? I'm going to give you two running backs. You tell me who'd you rather start this week. Let's start with this one. Damian Harris versus Gus Edwards. Who would you rather start? Ericton. I'm on the Gus bus. I'm, I'm all aboard the Gus bus. Let's go. I don't. Le'Veon Bell is just a bump in the road. They they he's not even on the team. He's not even on the active. Yeah, he's roster. on the practice squad, <laughs> yeah, he's bro. On the, he's he doesn't on the pra- even lift, bro. He's on the practice squad. That probably means he's not going to be active unless he somehow asserts himself over Tyson Williams, which could obviously happen. But Trenton Cannon's the one that's on the active roster because he can c- contribute on special teams. And Le'Veon Bell is not about that life. He's not it's about <laughs> special teams life. So you know, get out of here. He's just a bump in the road for the Gus bus. <laughs> All right, is the Gus bus picking you up too, Yates? Yeah, I've got Gus Edwards at 16 on the week. I've got Damian Harris at 26 on the week. So I am absolutely going with Gus Edwards here. I mean, for the Raiders last year, they allowed the fourth most fantasy points to the running back position and were surrendering 1.5 rushing touchdowns per game on average. So this defense really did not improve much over the offseason, in my opinion. So we're going to see Gus Edwards. I mean, the the Ravens are going to go up big in the first half, and then they are just going to run the ball, run the ball, Mm -hmm. run the ball. And the scoring opportunities are absolutely going to be there for Gus Edwards. So Edwards at 16, Damian Harris at 26. Uh, I've got Gus Edwards at 17, so I'm in agreement, and Harris is in the 20s for me, so there you have it. Let's go to the next one here. Daryl Henderson versus DeAndre Swift. Yates, who would you rather start this week? I've got Daryl Henderson at 22 on the week, and I've got DeAndre Swift at 24, so I would personally be going with Daryl Henderson. Eddie Goldman, uh, there's rumors right now, the nose tackle for the Chicago Bears, rumors that he has an injury, and they've been working out some, uh, some defensive tackles as well. Eddie Goldman is a huge piece to the run game, the run defense in Chicago, so while you've got guys like Akeem Hicks and Khalil Mack on that defensive line for Chicago, at, without Eddie Goldman, Daryl Henderson should have opportunities to pick up yardage in this game and the scoring opportunities. I think the Rams are going to be in the red zone a ton this week. I think that you should take the, uh, take the spread there still on the, uh, on the Rams. Oh, I think it's at seven and a half. Last time I checked, take the, uh, take the Rams side on that. I think that they are going to put up points on the board uh, through the passing game, and they're going to be in the red zone a ton. So Daryl Henderson is going to have opportunities to score in this one. Got him at 22 on the week. Henderson or Swift for you, Erickson. I'm still going with, with my guy, DeAndre Swift. I just don't like this game for fantasy really, because I feel like the Bears are just kind of kind of make it a, like a slog. Like that's what this this projects to be. It's like the Rams defense is going to let them move the ball, and the Rams are going to work out some kinks because again, none of their starters play in the preseason. So Sean McVay is like, all right, now I can kind of experiment a little. We're up by twenty four points. Like I can kind of do whatever I want. Like I just don't know. I feel like we're going to see a lot of different pieces and moving parts. I don't know what Henderson's role is going to be. At. Like wh- how much is Michelle going to play? I just have a lot of question marks, and I'm, I'm not ready to roll out Henderson with so many question marks about how he's going to be utilized alongside Michelle and what the playing time is going to be like. If we get, you know, we get worried that Michelle's not going to play, then it's a little bit different. But I feel confident Swift is going to be playing, you know, 100% of the game. Like, he's going to be in there all the time, catching passes out of the backfield with the lines tra- trailing. So I'm going to still continue to go with my guy, Swift. Well, it comes down to me. I'll break the tie. Give me Henderson. That's where I'm going here. I already said why I don't like Swift. So I'm not going to say it a third time. If you weren't listening the first two times like my children, I'm not going to say it a third time. All right, let's go with one more here. Mike Davis versus Raheem Mostert. Erickson, we'll start with you. Who would you rather start, Davis or Mostert? I'm definitely on the Raheem Mostert bandwagon that you guys have mentioned so out throughout the podcast already. Again, the Lions are just not a great defense. PFF has this great tool on the website, Strength of Schedule, and it actually incorporates the new rosters. So you're not looking at fantasy points against last year 
it actually looks at the current roster and the Lions, yes, like Yates, I think I alluded to, have not improved on defense whatsoever from last year. It's the third best matchup for running backs with their current roster that they have right now. And PFF also has an offensive line, defensive line matchup chart. And the 49ers have the biggest advantage in the trenches this week. So there's going to be huge running lanes for Raheem Mostert. And that's also why, again, you could see Trey Sermon also break off a couple of big runs. He doesn't even necessarily need to see a big workload. And you could see him also produce in this matchup as well. All right, let's move on to the wide receivers here. And the wide receiver starts sits. So let's go for this first grouping here, starting at 38. Kenny Galladay up at 38. Then we have LaVisca Chenault at 39. DJ Shark at 40. 41 for Jarvis Landry. Uh, then moving on, Michael Pittman, 42. Marvin Jones Jr. at 43. Michael Gallup at 44. And then we'll stop at 45. Curtis Samuel dealing with an injury. That news broke earlier today. So uh, this grouping here, when you're looking at it, Yates, who is that must start from this grouping from 38 to 45 in the ECR for you? There's a couple that I definitely think that you should get into your starting lineup. LaVisca Chenault being one of them. I love the matchup there with Houston, obviously. But then the guy that I will, it's been the guy that I've been standing on the table for all offseason. That's Michael Pittman Jr. I mean, you've got Carson Wentz full participant in practice today. He's going to be playing in week one. And Michael Pittman Jr., T.Y. Hilton's not active. Paris Campbell, we don't know what his role is in this offense. Zach Pascal is just a guy. So Michael Pittman Jr., I've got up at 31. And his ECR is 42. I think that uh, while the Seattle Seahawks defense did tighten things up last year, they were getting gashed early on in the year uh, in the secondary. And that was a matchup that you wanted to target your wide receivers against. I mean, they tighten things up, but there's still a secondary that doesn't have one of those star corners, those star lockdown corners that I feel scared about with Michael Pittman Jr. I feel like he's going to have a minimum of six, seven, maybe even eight targets in this game. And the upside is through the roof. So that is a big difference for me to go from 42 in ECR all the way up to 31. Give me Michael Pittman Jr. All right. I'm actually closer. I'm at 43 with Pittman there. So I'm on the negative side there. I'm just worried about how Carson Wentz and this offense is going to come together here with so much time missed. A lot of timing issues, a lot of things that have to be worked out in terms of kinks. And I think Seattle is going to be ready to play. Uh, When you're looking at this grouping here, Erickson, how about for you? Who's your must start? I, it's Chenault for me. You know, I have Chenault in 26. Like, I, I want him. I want to play him this week because I think the matchup is spectacular. The Texans actually just traded Bradley Roby to the Saints, even though he mm-hmm. was suspended for week one, so he wasn't going to play in this matchup anyway. But the Texans don't have anyone they can cover. They have no good cornerbacks. And we saw this team, specifically the Jaguars, have a really productive outing with DJ Chark that had a big game against the Texans last year when Bradley Roby missed time. And it was interesting, though, because... Chenault didn't play in that game, or he got he got hurt and left very early. So it could have been Chenault that actually had a mass, could have had the big game if it weren't for his injury. So look, when we look at the preseason usage, Chenault has been Trevor Lawrence's guy. Like he's been the most targeted Jacksonville wide receiver. I know that Marvin Jones didn't play in all the preseason games, but you know he missed time with an injury. DJ Chark has missed time with an injury. So if you're gonna place a bet on one of these Jags receivers, they all have great matchups. Like why why wouldn't it be Chanel? Like convince me why it wouldn't be him when he's been the most targeted receiver. He's been the one that spent the most time with Trevor Lawrence. Is anything possible? Could it be Marvin Jones? Yes, of course it could be. But the fact of the matter is all the targets, the routes run have all pointed to LaVisca Chenault. And I always thought he was the most talented of that trio of receivers. So I think the talent is there. The target should be there as well. And the matchup is there. So it's kind of that the trifecta, second best <laughs> trifecta Obviously, we have us three, number one, but I like <laughs> well, the, tri- yes. the, the, tri- the trio approach with LaVisca Chenault this week. And I'm clearly the Marvin Jones. I'm the veteran of the group. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the grizzled veteran. Uh, but LaVisca Chenault actually on my rankings as well at 28. So in terms of I'm much closer where you are and from a, a daily fantasy side, too, he's very cost effective in this matchup, too. You're talking about... Um, against Houston it could be Jones as well it could be Chark as well but I think it's going to be Chenault at the very minimum so he's the best of those three for me so we differ on Pittman we all agree on Chenault that's a good thing uh let's go to this next grouping of wide receivers here and talk about them this is in 46 on Mike Williams of the Chargers at Washington and we got Marquise Brown at Vegas uh we've got Devontae Parker at New England Jalen Waddell at New England then we've got Sterling Shepard, Jacoby Myers, Marquez Callaway, and Russell Gage. So there's definitely some guys here that are in that flex conversation if you're in 12 to 14 team leagues. These are a lot of the names you're looking at right now. Uh, Erickson, when you're looking at this grouping, who is your must start from this crew? It's Marquez Callaway for the New Orleans Saints. I get that people will bring up Jair Alexander. Oh no, he's on Jair Island. Like, what's he going to do? It's like, no, like Jair doesn't shadow. Like, he stays on one side of the field and. They're going to Marcus Callaway has shown that he's Jameis Winston's favorite target. Again, mm-hmm. you know, 
we have to work with the information that we have at our disposal and everything that we've seen so far of the Saints is that James Winston loves targeting this guy and why would that change in any way, shape, or form? Yes, Kamara's coming back and that would probably be, he'll probably lead the team in targets. You can see, see him get 10 to 12 targets in week one. No, not surprise anybody. But of the receivers, it's going to be probably Marcus Kelly. Deontay Harris is suspended. Michael Thomas is injured. Like there's nobody else that they're going to throw the ball to. So that's what I'm looking for with some of these later round receivers. Yes, can one of these Marquise Brown or Mike Williams, you know, catch a long ball? Like, sure. But that's not something worth banking on because if they don't connect, okay, you're looking at a zero. I, I need to look at a guy that has targets, and Marcus Callaway has proven that Jameis Winston trusts him, so that's what I'm going to roll with here, especially because if you have Callaway, like, you, you're kind of on a, a time clock with him. Like, you can only play him so many times, of course, when Michael Thomas comes back, he's not going to be nearly as valuable. So if you right. draft him, clearly you see the talent and you see his upside as the number one receiver on the Saints. So I'm rolling with Callaway. Yeah, I'm rolling him in within some deeper leagues as well. I actually have Callaway starting as a flex here. Uh, Yates, when you look at this crew, who is your must-start from this grouping? Yeah, well, this is, again, feeding in from pre-draft rankings, so it's Jalen Waddle for me. Jalen mm-hmm. Waddle in this range is a guy that I've got a lot of shares of, was fine drafting as a wide receiver three. Uh, in, in drafts, you didn't need to get him there, so... You know, uh, but you got him as a wide receiver for a flex option, maybe on your roster. Jalen Waddle for against the New England Patriots, Stephon Gilmore is on the pup and JC Jackson most likely is going to be matching up against Devontae Parker. So we've got Waddle operating out of the slot. And I think that he's going to be peppered with targets in this one. And uh, I, I really like Gaskin because of that. I love Waddle. Gasicki, I think, is still a fine option. He's sitting lower down in ECR anyway. So I think that he's still a fine option that you can roll into your lineup. But it's Waddle for me. I think that you can plug him in as a flex option, which is where he's going, where you drafted him, everything like that. You can uh, you can plug him into your lineup as a flex. And I think that he's got boom potential. Waddle at 49 is absolutely a must start. He is my guy. I've got him more than 10 spots higher in my personal rankings than the ECR. I love this matchup for everything that Yates just talked about when it comes to Waddle. And I'm starting him even as a wide receiver three in the deeper leagues if I have to. So as a flex play, he's absolutely in play without a doubt. Uh, in this game, or or look, you've also got Parker, you've got Jacoby Myers in this grouping. Would you start any of those guys, Yates? Would you fade away from both of them? How do you look at the rest of these guys? Uh, I'm not looking Devontae Parker's way. I... Uh, be, just because I think that this is a Waddle game. Uh, yeah. With Jacoby Myers, he's a guy that I think can see targets in this one, but when you've got guys like Nelson Aguilar, you've got uh, you know Kendrick Bourne as the other wide receiver there, uh, Jacoby Myers is going to be facing a secondary that has Byron Jones, Xavier Howard, Xavier Howard and... Uh, and Noah Igbenogany. Like, this is a very, very tough secondary where they're going to be able to key in on stopping Jacoby Myers, and the ball is going to have to flow through the tight ends in this offense. So I think Myers is just most likely just a flex play. He's a low-end flex play for me. I think that you can start him if you need to. But again, this again, this is feeding into pre-draft rankings mm-hmm. of where you drafted. You've mostly got other guys that you're willing to ride with based on who you drafted above Jacoby Myers. All right, so who is your must-fade from this entire grouping here, Yates, that you just want nothing to do with this week? Well, I mean, it's it's relative because these guys are all outside the top 36. Normally, mm-hmm. when we're talking fades, we're talking about guys that are within the top 30 that we have concerns about. Well, so, is there a guy in the top 30 you have concerns about you want to fade this week at wide receiver? Uh, well, I can pull that up in a second. But I think that the in this range, a guy that I am concerned about is Michael Gallup. And with Gallup, you know, he's sitting at 43 or 44 in ECR. So he's, again, a guy that you drafted to be a flex option. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is just going to shut down this, this Dallas passing game to the point where I don't think that – Gallup is going to have enough left over to be fantasy viable. So I think Gallup, if you drafted him to be a flex option, you've most likely got another option there at your wide receiver five, wide receiver six, however deep your benches are that you can turn to and be able to start over Michael Gallup this week. All right. When you're looking at this grouping here, uh, is there a fade for you anywhere in wide receivers, whether it be a higher ranked guy, Andrew, or somebody in this grouping, you just don't want to touch. So there's a guy that's ranked higher. It's Jamar Chase. I, I don't really want to start Jamar Chase in, for the Cincinnati Bengals, the rookie against the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, the Vikings defense was terrible last year. It's not the same defense. It's totally different than it was last year. Totally revamped secondary. They got defensive line back. They got linebackers back. It's not the same defense as it was last year. So it's going to be a top 10 unit this year. Mike Zimmer is going to right the ship and get things back the way that they should be because he always talks about how he's never had a bad defense until last year when he had a terrible defense. But the thing with Jamar Chase is, Look, yes, the preseason wasn't great. The drops were a big issue for him. I don't think the drops are super predictive of, you know, his career. Oh, he's going to be a boss now. Like, no, I don't think that's the case at all. But, I mean, clearly the guy's rusty. You know, he hasn't played football in a really long time. So it's not really shocking to see, okay, we have a quarterback coming off a major knee injury. You have a first-round rookie wide receiver that's got the dropsies. That's kind of more of a mental thing, and he hasn't played football in over a year. So to kind of just start him out of the gates and expect, oh, well, he should be, you know, a top guy. He should be Justin Jefferson right away. 
you know, look back to last year. What did Jefferson do during the first two weeks of the year? Nothing. Right. So just just be patient. Like the last thing you want to do is start Chase and get frustrated and then, you know, tilt trade right. him because you're getting annoyed when right. you just got to be patient with him. Like just leave him on your bench and let him start to develop. Ha- okay. Oh, he caught a touchdown. Oh, nice. Like, okay. He got eight, six targets. Okay, great. Now I feel good about playing him. Oh, week four, week five, week six, when some of these Bengals matchups get really, really good, that's where you're going to want to start Jamar Chase. So again, it's not a knock on him as a talent, as a talented player, because I think the talent is evident, but I just think it's okay to preach patience. You know, not every rookie has, you know, a prime time like a Jalen Waddle where the matchup is really there for him, especially with Will right. Fuller suspended. Like, it, it's kind of the, st- the stage is set for him to blow up in week one. It's the complete opposite for Jamar Chase, in my opinion. So I think you should be more patient with him and just leave him on the bench this week. And to Andrew's point, when people start tilting in other leagues where you don't have Chase, go make a trade yes. offer at week three. I think this is absolutely a guy you could peel off. Where do you have Chase ranked this week in week one? When you're looking at him, just curious because of what you just said about him. Yeah, so I have him at 42. So, 42, okay. Yeah. That's even lower than I have him. How that's about exactly, you, Yates? Where do you have Chase? exactly where I have him. I have him at wide receiver 42. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, uh, excellent I stuff stole, I stole Yates' ranking before I come <laughs> on the show. Oh, no. I just made the tweak with DeAndre Swift. That's all <laughs> yeah, you I was going to say, there's <laughs> one glaring difference. That's, <laughs> but that's good. Difference is good. I like difference. All right, let's uh, do a little would you rather wide receiver Antonio Brown versus Corey Davis. Who would you rather start this week? Andrew Erickson, we'll start with you. Antonio Brown. They're, they're ranked very close for me. They're two spots ahead, uh, apart, but I'm just going to go with the guy that, look, Tom Brady has shown that he loves Antonio Brown. He's been the most targeted receiver through the preseason. He was the most targeted receiver during the time that Antonio Brown joined the team last year. And he's like, live with the guy. They, they shower together. It just, <laughs> like, what, like what, what else do we need to see to kind of be convinced that Tom Brady is obsessed with Antonio Brown? He's going to continue to pepper him with targets regardless of how many snaps he's playing on the field. It, it just doesn't matter. And I've we haven't, Antonio Brown very high and we haven't seen Corey Davis play with Elijah Moore at the same time. That's the only right. thing where we've seen Antonio Brown play with two other great wide receivers, and Tom Brady still throws him the ball. So I'm going to go with A.B. Again, the matchup is also amazing against Dallas. So I'll go with A.B. The matchup so good, Andrew, and the Godwin injury makes me think that this is going to be an Antonio Brown game. I've got him as a top 20 wide receiver this week. So I don't know if that's too bullish, but that's where I am. So I'm Team AB in this one. And it's not that I dislike Corey Davis. I'd be very fine with starting Corey Davis. I think he's a very good, safe play also. So I'm good with either of these guys, but I would favor Brown just because of the matchup. How about you, Yates? If you could only start one of them, who would get that spot? Yeah, like Andrew said, it's super close. I've got Corey Davis at 23, and I've got Antonio Brown at 26. But that doesn't mean that I want to sit Antonio Brown. I love him in this matchup. And yeah, if Chris Godwin misses this game for some reason, then, you know, or with the uh, the injury, if that plagues him going into this matchup, then absolutely Antonio Brown's going to skyrocket up my draft boards, and and he will be the answer here. But Corey Davis, I think, is the guy. I'm just leaning into the leaning into the target share. J.C. Horn is going to be assigned to Corey Davis, and he's a rookie corner. Like he's going to. Mm-hmm. Corey Davis has the advantage there. And Elijah Moore, I think that, you know, yeah, he's going to play, but we also have the potential that Jamison Crowder is going to play in this game still. And if he does, then I think that he takes the slot role there and Keelan Cole stays on the outside. So, and Elijah Moore is just going to see some touches here or there. I don't, I don't think that the target share is going away for Corey Davis. He would be the option that I would go with. I've got him at 23. Yates, let's start with you with this one. Would you rather start Robbie Anderson or Juju Smith-Schuster? It's Robbie Anderson for me. Uh, I've been down on Juju Smith-Schuster all offseason, so mm-hmm. I'm definitely not even looking his way. I mean, here's the difference, all right? I've got Robbie Anderson at 30 in my wide receiver rankings. I've got Juju Smith-Schuster at wide receiver 52 on the week. So I am absolutely not going anywhere near Juju. Wasn't going near him in drafts, uh, so I don't have any shares. I'm not making this decision. Uh, but Robbie Anderson <laughs> for me is the uh, is the pretty clear answer. This is a fantastic matchup for the Carolina Panthers passing attack. I mean, Sam Darnold, like, I don't have the – stones to do it but uh <laughs> streaming sam darnold in week one uh, against his former team might actually be a kind of smart play because the new york jets just do not have any hope of slowing down this passing attack there's a lot of fun matchups in week one we've got the sam darnold jets narrative you got the two alabama quarterbacks playing each other by the way it's the first time since i think 1983 when it was uh, richard todd and ken stabler going against each other last time two alabama quarterbacks played head to head a lot of cool stuff. You got the Najee debut. You got so many fun things happening here. Saquon back on the field finally after a long time. It's a great time to be alive. But that being said, where do you want to go? Robbie Anderson or Juju, Andrew? Yeah, I agree with Yates. I'm going to go with Robbie Anderson. Haven't been the biggest Juju fan as well. Again, we got the Robbie Anderson revenge narrative. Okay, he used to be on the Jets too. So he's got a little, you know, he'll show up at the game day a little bit early with a little more (laughs) fight in him. And also, you look at the two secondaries. Again, PFF ranked all the secondaries heading into the 2021 season. Jets, 
28th ranked secondary, Bills fourth. So that makes it pretty easy for me to decide, okay, if they're both, you know, in crowded receiving corpses, you know, who's going to be the guy that's going to get more, who has a better matchup, and it really looks clear like it's going to be Robbie Anderson, so I'm out in Juju. Well, you guys both like Corey Davis, but I love him this week. I got him at 27, which I think is higher than both of you. So I have Corey Davis at 23. Oh, you got 23. Oh, man, <laughs> a couple spots more. Now I got to rethink my whole life here. Uh, 27 to 23. Maybe I could push him up just a tad more. Maybe, maybe to 25. We'll see what happens. But I'm not nearly quite as down on Juju as you are. I'm, I'm down on him. He's closer to 40. Then he is to 30, that's for sure. But, man, you are really down on him, Yates. You're done with Juju. Let's do one more. Jamar Chase versus Jerry Judy. I think I know which way this is going, Andrew, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Yes, I'm going with Jerry Judy. Going to buy into the Teddy Bridgewater connection that we saw during the preseason a little bit and the fact that Teddy Bridgewater is just an accurate quarterback and Jerry Judy gets open at will. So, again, James Bradbury is not going to be on one of Sutton or Judy the entire time, the Giants' stud cornerback. So they'll find some other matchups still. Again, I'm not, like, super excited to necessarily play Judy because I just think that this game's going to be kind of gross because the Giants' offense is just going to be a slog, kind of like the Bears <laughs> with Daniel Jones. And the Denver, Denver's got a really good defense. So I feel like yeah. Denver's going to try to play bully, bully, ball control and not necessarily, you know, make Teddy Bridgewater win them the game. So I have Jerry Judy in the th- low 30s, so I'm not, like, super excited to play him, but I would still play him over Juju Schuster. You're giving me this 1913. Or, or you give me this uh, 1913 kind of feel right now to this game. The way you're, you're I mean, <laughs> kind of I, I honestly, m- the Giants might actually get shut out in this game. Like that's why, yep. I, like, I really, <laughs> I have, I know, I know you guys have talked about Swift and like his concerns with like the injury, and I know that we're not talking about running backs right now, but like where you guys have Barkley ranked? Because it's like he's yeah. got low. some. Of, he's got. I've some... got him low this week. Okay. to be honest with you. Okay. I mean, we could we could talk. I want to get uh, I want to get Yates' feelings on this last one. Then we can go back and talk about that. Cool. So Jamar Chase or Judy for you, uh, Yates, and then we'll talk about Saquon. Yeah, so I mentioned I've got Jamar Chase right in line with Andrew, which is at 42. I've got Jerry Judy at 32. Uh, So I think that he is still one of these very, very safe options that you can roll out as a wide receiver three, which is where you drafted him. Uh, Jerry Judy is the guy that I would absolutely be going with. And, you know, to double back to what Andrew was saying, like the New York Giants, you've got Kenny Galladay injured, uh, probably not going to play in this game. Darius Slayton's on the injury report. Uh, Kadarius Tony's on the injury report. Evan Ingram is probably not going to play this game. Mm-hmm. Kyle Rudolph is dealing with his own foot injury. Uh, and then Saquon Barkley is going to be coming back for the first time since his injury. Uh, it's Sterling Shepard. And that's it. <clears throat> like, that is it. So Daniel Jones against the Denver Broncos pass rush, who has Von Miller back and healthy, against the corner group that has Kyle Fuller, Patrick Sertan, Ronald Darby, Bryce Callahan. They zero points. Uh, like take the under on whatever the spread is for <laughs> the over under for. New and in time. classic week one form, we'll come back here next week this time, and we talk about man. I can't believe the Giants put up forty. How that happened? Yeah. That's so week no. one. All right, let's have the conversation just because we are talking about the Giants right now and where you guys have Ezekiel. I mean, excuse me, Saquon Barkley because I've got him at sixteen right now. That's where I've got him. I don't want to drop him too much further than that, but. I do have him in terms of some of the matchups lower than some other ones, like Robinson's in a really good matchup this week. Um, I still got Ezekiel Elliott, despite the problems with the offensive line ahead of him. I still got Chris Carson actually ahead of him, despite the tougher matchup with Indianapolis, just because of the workload and the injury. That's where I have him. Andrew, where do you have Saquon this week? I have Saquon Barkley. Brace yourselves. Oh, All right, RB23. Like, I, I really do not feel any sort of conf- – like, what – what indication gives anyone confidence to play Saquon Barkley this week? Again, we don't know if he's going to get a full workload, number one. And, and that's what you need. You need volume for the running back to overcome bad matchups. And this, on paper, looks like the single worst matchup you could possibly ask for. Sands, the Giants matchup last year, week one, where Saquon Barkley saw 21 touches and still finishes the RB23 yeah. because he played against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like This is the version of the Pittsburgh Steelers last year. It's the exact same scenario, except in that game, we saw Barkley get over 20 touches. He played at 83% snap share. Those are both not going to happen this week. Like, it's not going to happen. So, unless we get word, okay, he's got a full workload. Okay, then I would change my stance on him. But you're hoping that his he breaks off a big run, which obviously is possible, but a lot of running backs can break off big runs. And to do it and to bet on it against the Denver Broncos, who have PFF's number one ranked secondary, number four ranked linebacker unit, number 10 ranked defensive line, like, across the board, like, they're so stacked. And you have the worst offensive line in the NFL blocking for Saquon Barkley. Yes, can he get it through get, can he get it done through the passing game? Yeah, that's what he did against the Steelers and he still finishes RB23. So that's kind of where I put the benchmark as okay, where do I put him in this situation? And I just looked back at last year, I was like it's kind of the same scenario and he finishes RB23. So 
that's really where I feel comfortable putting him. Like, I, I'll play Raheem Mostert over him. I'll play Gus Edwards over him. I'll play Damian Harris over Like, there's just, like, a lot of other guys i just so much rather prefer to play because, you know, yes, we love the talent, but if he's not getting touches, then it doesn't matter. Like, if he gets 10 touches, he's going to be a bust. Like, he's going to be a bust for you in your lineup, and I'm afraid that's going to happen. So, again, it really depends on what your roster looks like. Hopefully, if you drafted Saquon, you have another pivot play like Raheem Mostert, who you could get much later in the draft. I know I was kind of preaching that. If you decide to draft Saquon in round one or round two, that you need to have a potential pivot plan to turn to week one, week two, if he's slow out the gates or if he doesn't play at all. So hopefully you have another alternative. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got real concerns about Saquon. All right. Good conversation there, Yates. Should I brace myself for your ranking as well? <laughs> No, I'm right in line with ECR. So I've got him at 14 right now. Okay. Uh, and do I feel great about having Saquon Barkley at RB14? No, not necessarily. But it's also one of these things like you drafted Saquon Barkley, depending on when you drafted. Uh, you drafted Saquon Barkley in either the first or the second round. So you don't have another option that you can turn to and pivot to, most likely, unless you are going with a guy like a Melvin Gordon or something like that. Like, it's Saquon Barkley. You drafted him with the fir- in the first round. You've got to be playing him in my opinion so do i think that you know do i have high hopes for this matchup no i really don't but i think that he's still one of these guys that you're probably gonna have to play no i agree you probably have to play him you hope that he has that one big play or hopefully he gets in the end zone if so then he returns that value but i'm I'm at 16 14 for you you said and what was it 742 where you had barkley <laughs> 20, 23, 20, exactly 23 exactly what he finished last week one last year so that's right. why i don't think it's that stop living that in the outlandish. past andrew you gotta, you gotta live mean, in the present come on i mean yeah he uh, got he got more touches in the past <laughs> <laughs> can't argue with that all right let us move on to the tight end position Woo! here and the tight end position i know everybody's favorite <laughs> thing here uh we've got some of the guys on the fringe outside once you get uh in the you know, eight, nine, ten. You've got Goddard. You've got Noah Fant, Robert Tunyon. Then when we get to eleven, Higby, twelve, Mike Gesicki, Johnu Smith at thirteen. So let's just start right here. Gesicki or Johnu Smith? These are the guys at twelve and thirteen, respectively, in ECR. Yates, we'll start with you with this one. Your thoughts? Who would you rather start, Johnu Smith or Mike Gesicki? I've got Johnu Smith at eight on the week, uh, and his ECR is thirteen. And then Gesicki, I've got at thirteen, and his ECR is twelve. I have Johnu at ten. Mike Kosicki at 16. You know I'm not a fan. I just don't see it. I don't know what everybody else is seeing. Maybe I'll see it and I'll be converted. Who knows? Erickson, how about you? With those two back-to-back in ECR, which way would you go? Who would you start? Yeah, so I got Janu at 10 and Mike Kosicki at 13. So I will also go with, with Johnny Smith. I think that the... I know Yates hit on it when he was talking about Jacoby Myers, but if you look at the weakness of the Miami Dolphins defense, it's the middle of the field it's not the perimeter you know they have really good outside cornerbacks Xavier Howard Xavier Howard is going to erase Nelson Aguilar they're going to be like Aguilar just go over there just run wind sprints Howard takes him out of the game whatever (laughs) so don't don't play Nelson Aguilar this week please and then you have Byron Jones who's probably going to match up a lot with Jacoby Myers who plays in inside and outside of the slot he's not always in the slot so he'll match up with Byron Jones a lot but then that leaves the tight ends and the Miami Dolphins do not have good linebackers whatsoever and look they're featured parts of this offense. And no, we haven't seen them playing the preseason yet, but everyone's going to realize after week one that, wow, we should have ranked the Patriots tight ends way higher because they're featured in this offense. Like that's mm-hmm. what you should be looking for with the tight ends. Not, oh, like maybe they'll get two targets in this game. No, like are they featured in the game plan? Like the Patriots are going to build their game plan around Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. There's not many tight ends where that's a potential, that's that's what they do. So I love both. I think you can start both Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. I, I would have no problem. I have them both in my top 12. So if you're looking for a streamer, I know Hunter Henry's available in a lot of leagues. I'd pick him up because I think that he'll give you decent production that you can't necessarily get if you have a bad tight end matchup on your roster or you're literally just streaming guys because you went late round tight end. Speaking of two catches and a touchdown, Rob Gronkowski next on this list <laughs> at 14. Austin Hooper, Gerald Everett, Hunter Henry, who you just mentioned, Zach Ertz, and Ferkser. All right, let's take hunter henry out of this grouping here andrew when you see gronk cooper everett Ertz, and ferkser who do you think is a good streaming tight end option this week if you say had injuries or maybe you just things that can go your way or you're in a very deep league let's say you're 14 team league or 16 team league for me i'm going <laughs> with i like austin hooper i that's where i thought you'd get i too. love i, I mean that. i like austin hooper a lot you look at this chiefs defense and that's that that's where that we're bad against last year was tight ends. 
Mm-hmm. And I remember because I was playing DFS last week or last year in the playoffs, and Austin Hooper was like the guy in the in the divisional playoff game against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he just totally busted because David Njoku got all the targets and touches. So the process was there. We wanted the tight end. It was just the wrong one. So that was unfortunate, and it's why it didn't work, it didn't work out in the long run. But I, I like the matchup a lot with Austin Hooper. I wrote an article over on PFF.com. It's going to be out tomorrow about you know starting and sit players, and Austin Hooper was one of the guys I highlighted as a tight end. You look at the Kansas City Chiefs against tight ends last year, 32nd in success rate allowed, 30th touchdown rate, 32nd PFF coverage grade against the tight end position. And they're specifically really bad against tight ends that line up in line. Remember Rob Gronkowski in the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly where they're not good is in the middle of the field. So Austin Hooper, I got him 12th this week. I like him a lot. You have a massive projected total, 54.5 points for the Browns Chiefs. There's going to be points scored in this game. The Chiefs can't score all of them. Maybe they can, but <laughs> hopefully they can't score all of them. And I think that we're going to see a connection between Mayfield and Austin Hooper this year. So I, I would scoop up, scoop up Hooper because I think that we're going to be talking about him. You as just almost Hooper. call him a scooper, uh, a, a scooper, scooper. Hooper, a Hooper, a Hooper scooper. scooper. You're a Hooper scooper. That's what Andrew is. He's a Hooper scooper, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag Hooper scooper. Please hit us up uh, at Andrew Erickson underscore at Joe Pizza Pia seventeen. Of course at Kyle Y NFL with the uh, all the Hooper scooper memes you possibly can. We will we will welcome all of them. How, how about you here, Yes, yeah, so When you're looking at this grouping that's got Gronk, Hooper, Everett. Uh, Henry Ertz Ferkser, is there somebody here that you feel comfortable streaming this week? Well, at this point, you know, it's difficult to say like, yeah, stream this option because again, you're just rolling with who you drafted within, mm-hmm. you know, if you're a 14 team league, you're still not really considering many of these guys. So the guy that I will agree with though is Austin Hooper. Now, I think the process is there. The The opportunity is absolutely there for Austin Hooper in this offense. It's just going to be a matter of who gets the targets? Is it Austin Hooper or is it going to be Harrison Bryant? Is it going to be David Njoku? Which tight end is going to be the guy that gets the targets? The process is there. The opportunity is there for Austin Hooper to return value. I've got him at 14 on the week. So does that mean that I really, really want to play Austin Hooper? No, not necessarily, but he is a guy that you can pivot to. If you, let's say that you, for some reason, drafted Evan Ingram, then you can scoop up Austin Hooper off of the waiver wire and then you can plug him into your lineup. All right, I don't know if we have the luxury to ask this question because I think the answer is no, but I'll ask it anyway. Is there anybody in the top 10 of tight ends that you want to fade this week that you don't like the matchup, Yates? Uh, let me look at... I mean, because um, you got guys like, you know, Tunyon, Hawkinson's on that grouping against San Francisco. I feel like you got to play Hawkinson. You had good draft capital yeah. on him. Same thing with Logan Thomas. To me, I don't think you have this luxury to really sit no any of those guys. Noah Fant is the one guy that I would be fading. I mean, I was fading him to begin with. Uh, I don't think that he should have been drafted as the 7th or 8th tight end off the board. So he's a guy that's staying consistent with my pre-draft opinion. I mean, he has this weird leg injury. Like, we don't know what exactly is going on with him. So he's one of these guys that may not come into this game uh, at 100%. And then the targets. like The targets are going to go to Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Javante Williams out of the backfield. It's a loaded receiving core. I just don't see the upside there for Noah Fant. So I've got him at 12 on the week. I'm still staying... Where it is saying that you can start him if you have him, but I'm a little bit lower. His ECR is nine currently. Are you in that same vein when it comes to Fant? You get a little nervous here, Andrew. Maybe you're looking for another option. I mean, I, I pretty much hate every tight end outside the top seven guys. <laughs> Again, you're just grasping at straws. Like, there's no confidence in any of these guys. Right. From seven to 20, it's kind of all this big tier for me. So, like, I like Austin Hooper, but I also know that he could bust, like, half of the mm-hmm. other tight ends that are outside those top seven guys. Again, after Logan Thomas, who I have at number seven. This is like a clear, like it's like a cliff that falls and Noah Fant is the first guy there because I think Noah Fant's really talented. But I also know that he could get two targets in this game because the Broncos may not need to push the narrative. You have other talented wide receivers there. So by playing Noah Fant, I'm, I'm just betting on the talent. Like, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, he breaks off a big play because that's what he does. And that's what's going to help him be somewhat of a fantasy viable option. But it's not something that's really reliable from week to week. So again, yeah, I feel shaky about really all those other tight ends outside the top seven. So yeah, and I think that kind of gives you some free will where if you have an inkling about a player, like I've talked about Hooper, and you want to start Hooper over Noah Fant, do it. Like, chances are you're not going to get burned by starting one tight end at, you know, at tight end 17 right. versus tight end 10. Like, shoot your shot with tight end because you're just, you're just hoping for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. That's shoot. why I think Gronk's in play this week. <laughs> yeah, and yes, we'll I talk agree. about it in a second. I think there's a good chance Gronk has that two catches and a touchdown, as I was kind of joking, but not really joking about, because I just feel like that's what we're going to see, especially if, again, Godwin's on 100%. They're going to utilize other bodies in that offense. Let's transition to the quarterbacks, and we'll talk about in deeper leagues. The guys are on the fringe here. Joe Burrow, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. They're ranked 15, 16, 17, and 18 in ECR. Out of those four guys, Andrew, who would be your favorite start in this group? Mine would be Baker Mayfield. 
I like the matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs. Should be a high-scoring game. And if the Chiefs get up, look, Baker Mayfield was PFF's second-highest-graded quarterback from week eight on. Like, he doesn't get enough credit for being good in real life. And, and that means a lot. Again, we get we get caught up in the projected passing volume and this and that, but it really matters like, how efficient is this quarterback? Like, can he throw touchdown passes? Because that's ultimately what drives quarterback scoring. You, can th- you have to throw for a lot of yards to make up ground when if a quarterback throws for three touchdowns, like, they're going to be a top 12 guy, like automatically. So I like Baker Mayfield to do that in this game. I think he can keep pace with the Kansas City Chiefs if they build a big lead. I, they're going to see their second year with Kevin Stefanski. I think Baker Mayfield is going to shock a lot of people. And they're going to be like, wow, like, remember he was like the first overall pick. Uh, it was, was like impressive as a rookie. Yeah, he's yeah. a really good quarterback in real life. And I think we're going to see more of it in fantasy land this year. So I think that you're going to see a shootout in Kansas City. And I think the Browns are going to be part of it. So the last I'm going to go six- with Baker Mayfield what, six, eight games or so, Baker Mayfield last year, were much better. And mm-hmm. there was those two games at home last year where you he's couldn't got, he's literally got Odo throw back. the football. He's got Odo hey, Beckham back. So. Well, let's hope that that's a positive. Uh, how about for you, Yates? Burrow, Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. And you can even throw Fitzpatrick into that conversation too if you want. Do you have one guy that sticks out for you? Is it Cousins with the matchup or Darnold with the revenge? They're all in this same territory. So I've got Kirk Cousins at 15. I've got Joe Burrow at 16, Darnold at 17, Baker Mayfield at 18. So I flip the order in this. I really don't care. Uh, for me, it's Kirk Cousins, though. I will stay true to my rankings there and say, like, I think he's the guy that if I want, I need to pivot to a streamer. Uh, in our 14 team draft that we just did for inside the company here, uh, I drafted Trey Lance in the 10th round, I think, ninth round, whatever it was. And then a couple rounds later, I came back and grabbed Kirk Cousins because of his matchup here in week one against Cincinnati. So this is a matchup where I think that you're going to see it's going to be a Dalvin Cook game, but you're still going to have Justin Jefferson, and Adam Thielen be productive enough where I think Kirk Cousins can return value on where he is being ranked and where, you know, if you scoop him up off the waiver wire, if you're already in need then uh, you can definitely go to Kirk Cousins there. All right, here's the expert consensus rankings. We're talking super flex now. These are the quarterbacks, 24 and on. Jimmy Garoppolo, 24. Derek Carr, 25. Then Zach Wilson, Tyrod Taylor, Daniel Jones, Teddy Bridgewater, Jared Goff, and Mac Jones. Erickson, when you're looking at this board, who do you feel good about if you had to start one of these guys as your second quarterback, either in a 2QB format or a super flex? Probably going to start Jimmy Garoppolo because, number one, he's probably available even in, in super flex <laughs> leagues because not a lot of people be. drafted him. I know I saw him in a couple of waiver wires because he's there because people were assuming that Trey Lance would get the job, but all indications are that it's not going to be Trey Lance under center, at least for the majority of this game. And, look, they're playing the Detroit Lions. Again, Garoppolo is not going to light the world on fire just because he may not see all the passing attempts and potentially you could see Trey Lance working in the red zone, but – I mean, it's the Lions. Can he get 15 to 18 points? Probably. Like, he can throw a couple touchdowns. He just needs to dump it off to Debo. Debo run for 80-yard touchdown. And then you got Jimmy Garoppolo. You're collecting those fantasy points. So, I think, again, some of these guys have bad matchups down here, which concerns me. Garoppolo at least has a good matchup. So, I don't think he has a super high ceiling. But if he's your quarterback, too, which is the kind of the range we're looking at, I think he can give you some a safe supplemental floor in that spot. I think you're going to give Yates nightmares after that scenario you just ran. I mean, oh my God, all the Trey Lance shares you got. You cannot have Jimmy Garoppolo have that kind of a game. Uh, how about you, though, Yates? When you're looking at the names remaining here, is it a guy like Carr? Is it a guy like even Mac Jones, potentially, who I don't know. I mean, like, no. it would not surprise me if Mac Jones. Stream, stream the Miami defense. 15. Stream the Miami oh, defense. Oh, really? Okay. Won. Yes, right. absolutely. You're just going uh, to keep being bitter about this. Is that what's going to happen? No, it's <laughs> because he's a rookie quarterback going up against one of the league's. The uh, league that led the him. league, uh, the team that led the league in interceptions last year. That's why. That's uh, for me, Jimmy Garoppolo is at 21. Uh, Carson Wentz is at 22. With Jimmy mm-hmm. Garoppolo, I think that, yeah, the matchup. If you're at this point in quarterback rankings, you're playing the matchup game. So Jimmy Garoppolo is a guy that you can absolutely turn to. The concern is that we see a like Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers, NFC Championship game from a couple of years ago, and Garoppolo only throws the ball seven times. Uh, so that's the concern there. Uh, but the matchup is absolutely there. Otherwise, Carson Wentz, you know, he is signaling that he's going to be healthy. Seattle is a defense that you can pass on. I think that uh, Michael Pittman Jr., if I am a fan enough of him there, where I've got him up in the 30s, uh, where ECR has him at 42, then I should be at least buying into Carson Wentz, at least being a QB2 super flex value. So I've got him at 22 on the week. All right, let's move on real quick because Dan Harris asked us to do this. He said that people are wild about this. They can't get enough of defense and kickers. They said they just can't get enough of them. So real quick, outside of the top 12 here, when you're looking at the defenses, so you got 
teams like the Carolina Panthers, Pittsburgh Steelers somehow ranked outside, I guess, because they're facing Buffalo. But still, historically, you know, we're waiting for TJ Watt news and all that to happen to uh, Seattle. Also at 15, playing against Carson Wentz, who has not been on the field much this preseason. So, yeah, it's, is there a defense that you feel comfortable with that's outside of the top 12 right now? Or maybe that you like more than one that is in the top 12 ECR? I'm going to go with Miami. Uh, I know that they're at sitting at 12 right now, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and just say Miami because I mentioned, you know, they had 18 interceptions last year. Uh, and Mac Jones, for as, as great as he's looked in the preseason, he's been doing it against second string quarterbacks sure. so or second string uh, defenses there. So I think that, you know, he's, he's probably going to turn the ball over, and that's fine. Like, he's a rookie quarterback in his first NFL game, but that's what you want to target when you're streaming a defense. And Miami knows how to take the ball away. So I will go with Miami here. Minnesota's the one for me, Andrew, at 16 that I think has some appeal with the way Cincinnati is kind of stumbling into the season right now with Joe Burrow. But is there another one for you that kind of stands out that you might be able to get away with this week? I like the Vikings. And the one that stands out to me, even though he's not even listed. So Carolina, I think the Carolina Panthers and New York Jets are both kind of in play as streaming defense. I know I had to pick up Carolina because they have a good matchup this week against, again, the New York Jets and a rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson. We'll see. How he does is kind of the same philosophy that Yates is following with the Miami Dolphins. Again, obviously Miami's a better real life defense, so that's ideally what you want. But Carolina is actually ranked 13th, so I am following the rules. Um, <laughs> so I like Carolina. They actually have a bunch of good matchups coming up in the next couple weeks as well. So it's something that if they play well, you know they are young. They're a young defense, so they could turn a corner this year. But look, Zach Wilson has tested. Been he's looked good against backups. So we'll see him, see if he makes all those tight window throws against pros, and hopefully we can see some interceptions. I think that this game is kind of like a sneaky, weird shootout game because you got the Sam mm -hmm. Darnold thing with, with Zach Wilson. There's a lot of cool narratives with this game. So even like the Jets, too. I mean, Carolina has the worst offensive line in the NFL. Like, again, we talk about the Giants, but Carolina, I think, is right up there. I think it's PFF's 31st ranked offensive line, and they also have an injury as well that's not being talked about at all because it's already been such a bad offensive line. I don't think it affects McCaffrey, but look, Sam Darnold, his biggest issue last year in his whole career was pressure. And that's where he's never been good. And I get that the Jets don't have Carl Lawson anymore, and that sucks for their defense, but mm -hmm. they do not have, you know, their, their offensive line they're going against is very bad. So you could see Sam Darnold under pressure, and that's where we've seen him make mistakes. So, again, if you're desperate, I think Carolina's a good option. I also think the Jets are a sneaky option there as well. Is there anybody ranked outside of the top 12 in kickers that you think actually should be in the top 12, Andrew, that you think maybe from a scoring standpoint, if you like that Philly game, does Jake Elliott get a lot more opportunities against Atlanta? Does that become a game with a high total for you? Or is there something else on the board maybe people are not seeing? No, I think that Jake Elliott makes a lot of sense. He's playing in a dome. I right. think that, that you don't want to overlook that enough. Like dome games are just high scoring environments. There's just more points scored in them because there's no weather effects kickers should be more spot on because there is no wind there's none of that those outlying factors so yes i think jake Elliott makes a lot of sense that should be a high total game i, th I like jalen hurts a lot this week at the quarterback position so we should see some points from jake Elliott as the eagles kicker all right how about you for you yates any uh, kicker there that kind of pops off to you dare i ask uh, Jake Elliott was going to be the guy that I singled out oh, as well. Good. So uh, we're I really all happy. don't have much to add to that, just because, again, I do think that the Atlanta defense is going to give way here. Uh, even though I have concerns about Jalen Hurts season long, week one, fire him up. And I think that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to put up points on the board. So Elliott should be uh, should be a solid play this week. Yeah, that game's going to be a fun total. I can tell you that right now. Let's go. All right, just to recap for everybody, here are our official top starts and sits of the week. Andrew, you can go first. Give me the guy that you must start and the guy that you want to definitely sit in week one. Start, Mr. Big Chest, Antonio Brown. Sit, Kenny Galladay. I'm sorry, you just can't. And maybe more Giants, but can't start Kenny Galladay. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Yates, how about for you? Who is your must start and must sit of week one? Yeah, the guy that I'm a little bit higher than ECR on is uh, Gus Edwards this week going up against La the Las Vegas Raiders defense. I absolutely think that you can get away with starting Gus Edwards as a mid-range RB2, potentially even high-end RB2. I think that he's going to find the end zone pretty easily in this one. The sit of the week for me, sorry, Andrew, I'm going DeAndre Swift. I just have concerns about his conditioning this week and the amount of snaps that he's going to play in week one. I absolutely believe in the talent. I absolutely think that in other games, you can definitely buy into the pass catching narrative and, and the catch up narrative there. But in week one here, I just have a little bit too many concerns. So we got DeAndre Swift as my set of the week. My must start of the week is Jalen Waddle, baby. Let's go. No Stephon Gilmore on the field. Tons of volume. I'm very excited about this matchup. And don't worry, Erickson, I got your back. I'm going to check Yates for you. Sit Michael Pittman. Indianapolis right now is a mess. They are a hot mess. Let them figure it out. I am not putting my stock anywhere. Yates is right about the logic. The ball's got to go somewhere. 
but I think it might go to the other team more often than not. So Jamal Adams, <laughs> I think, might have more receptions than Michael Pittman when all said and done of this game. So there you have it. Those are our official week one starts and sits. Now, when it comes down to Thursday Night Football, which is tomorrow here, I can't believe it, we're finally here. Real quick, have some fun. We already talked about Michael Gallup. Yates, you mentioned, not a fan, so you want to sit Michael Gallup in this matchup. Is that correct? Yeah, if I can't afford it. Uh, I just don't see the upside here. There's definitely going to be games where he has upside. I just don't think that this is one of them. How about you, Erickson? Are you in lockstep there on Gallup? Yeah, uh, I'm out. He's playing in three receiver sets only. He's coming off the field. And when they do two tight ends, it's Lamb and Cooper. So loss of snaps, tough defense. I'm out. How about Godwin? Are you running him out there tomorrow night? Yes, I will play Godwin. All right, same thing for you, Yates? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we want more information on what exactly is going on with this uh, potential on the injury report, stuff like that. But assuming that he is fully healthy then and he is going to play, then yes, you start him against Dallas. All right, last one here. The Buccaneers running backs, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette. Start, sit, sit them both, start them both. I don't know, Erickson, help us out. This is going to be the uh, the fun game where I feel like we're all going to be wrong every single time. I don't know. I have a lot, I have a lot of confidence in Ronald Jones this week. I don't know what, okay. what you guys think, but I have a lot of confidence in him. He started in the preseason game with Brady. Again, I know he was switching drives with Leonard Fournette, so it's kind of like a pseudo starter, the best way to describe it. But I know he's better than Leonard Fournette as a runner. And... Does that mean he'll get goal line carries? Not necessarily, but if someone's going to burst off, break off a big run against the Dallas Cowboys defense, it's probably going to be Ronald Jones. So that's who I'm betting on, and I would start Ronald Jones over Saquon Barkley. So there you go. Oh, wow. There you go. Ronald Jones for you or Leonard Fournette, Yates? Uh, again, this is going into where you drafted these guys. So Ronald Jones, you were drafting as an RB3. You most likely do not have to start him, but I've got Ronald Jones at 27 on the week, and I don't even know where I have Leonard Fournette. It's way down there. So uh, not going anywhere near Leonard Fournette. I just, I have more faith in Ronald Jones. Does that mean that I am confident the way that Andrew said that he was confident in Ronald Jones? No, I need to see this backfield play out first and to find out what what the rules are. I just have no idea what this offense, what this backfield particularly is going to look like. But Ronald Jones is the guy that I'd be rolling out if I did have to choose one of these Bucks running backs. Well, this has been a very productive hour, that's for sure. We've hit a lot of players on the fringe. We hope you've had, hope you set your lineups. And uh, don't forget, we've also coined a new phrase here, Hooper Scooper, which is going to sweep the nation. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure of it. And if you want some more help with your start sit, use our start sit assistant, part of my playbook at Fantasy Pros. Go to fantasypros.com slash my playbook and upgrade to our MVP status by going to fantasypros.com slash offers. All you got to do is make a $10 deposit on one of our partner sites, enter a contest, and you get six free months of the Hall of Fame package. And when you have the Hall of Fame package, not only do you get my playbook, you'll get that I IDP show that we're doing every week too with Scott Bogman and myself. We got so many fun offerings here over at Fantasy Pros. We want you to stay with us. Andrew, I am so excited to have you here with us all season. Again, you can follow Andrew on the Twitter machine at Andrew Erickson underscore. Show him some love. He's part of this family here at Fantasy Pros every week helping us out. Thank you to Pro Football Focus for loaning him out to us too. I'm not sure what the rental fee is, but whatever it is, you're well worth it. I don't care what uh, Yates says, but that'll do it for us. So the story of the game goes on for Andrew Erickson and Kyle Yates. I'm Joey P. We will see you next time, kids. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.